how acting saved Katrina Balfe after her chaotic years of modeling. Why was author Diana Gabaldon so harsh about some episodes? What do we already know about season 6's steamy scenes? And who met their first love as the shooting started? Hello, my name is Joy and let's dive into the nitty gritty of Outlander. Just uh, sit back and, and enjoy the ride. The first main lead. Here she is, a woman who brought sassy to Sassenach. Can you imagine it was literally Katrina Belve's first lead role ever? Yes, yes, the Irish star has always been passionate about acting, but was scouted and invited to Paris as a model, which turned out to be really tough. You're supposed to just automatically be this fun, interesting, edgy person that fashion people want to be around. But then at the same time, you have to be so skinny and so androgynous, Belf shared on the podcast Thanks a Million. After those chaotic years of facing criticism on a daily basis, she sort of hit a point in her life where she was like, that's it, now or never. So Katrina moved to LA and spent her time with an acting coach doing random scenes. She confessed it was a chance to peel away all of those bad habits of self-hate speech from her years as a model. Little by little, meeting people from the working environment, the aspiring actress started to believe in herself. You're gonna get the smart brunette girl roles, you just have to work, Katrina's coach once told her. Indeed, she became an English woman who plays off all those kilted Scotsmen. So far, Katrina's played a depressed young mother and a surgeon in 1960s Boston, an anxious courtesan and Jacobite conspirator in Paris during the time of Louis XV, and a middle-aged herbalist and settler in the American colony of North Carolina in the 18th century. We don't doubt any of those iterations and totally trust her. On top of that, Katrina's the only cast member who actually speaks Gaelic, even though she rarely needs her skill on set. But what about her on-screen husband? The first cast member we keep coming back to Outlander for the beautiful scenery, but was it easy to find its key element? At the beginning, Outlander showrunner Ronald D. Moore thought they'd cast Claire first because she'd be the easiest to find. She's a smart 20th century British woman, and there are lots of them and we'll find her quickly, but Jamie's gonna be tough. How do you find the king of men? This heroic figure, this Scot. Ironically, the opposite turned out to be true. It was so shocking all of us because we thought we were never going to find this guy and to find him first was just amazing. However, he was literally the first one to be cast. Four days. That's how long it took to find the perfect actor to play Jamie Fraser, our dashing Scottish warrior. Enter Sam Hewan. While his fans, the Hooligans, momentarily called him the most appealing man alive, author Diana Gabaldon wasn't initially sure he was the one. What? Most importantly, Gabaldon said Hewan didn't look like Jamie whom she modeled on her husband, Doug Watkins, who is much older than Sam and looks strikingly different. That's why my husband likes the show. Whenever he sees Sam in profile, he wants to grab his nose and pull it out another inch or so, she told Express. On top of that, some of Sam's photos were, quite frankly, odd-looking, the author recalls. Well, within just five seconds of seeing his audition tape, her mind was quickly changed. The prolific author a former Disney scriptwriter and animal behaviorist, Diana Gabaldon is known for speaking her mind, just like Claire, the character she created. Firstly, she appeared in the series with some pretty natural acting for a cameo. What can be a stronger endorsement for the cast than the author's willingness to join it? Diana recalled being struck by the set and the production. Uh, everything that I've seen has just been done with such a very high attention to detail, you know, and a devotion to quality. In fact, Diana's writing is what made Outlander so wildly popular. The author even has a best-selling book titled How I Write Sex Scenes, where she divulges the secrets behind those sensual moments. Diana knows what she's talking about. I've been married for 42 years. You don't manage that without being reasonably good at it. By the way, we have some details to reveal about the steamy scenes. Just wait for a wee bit. However, she hasn't always approved of her book's adaptation. When we were all enjoying season 5, Gabaldon tweeted her harsh review of the steamy stable scene of the Better to Marry Than Burn episode. Bad dialogue, bad direction, bad lighting, awful set. Actors did their level best with what they were given to work with. Do you agree with her? Anyways, for the upcoming season, we know the executive producers have talked about splitting or combining books. They want to feel as free as possible. At least we have Sam Hewan's Twitter to keep an eye on for some hints. So far, there's a lot of snow and night shootings. One more scene to go. I'm Jumei. Jumei loves Claire. Sassens. Here's his sleepy confession. You can do it, soldier. The story behind the curls. 
you know, obviously I'm not a ginger, really, um, so there's a problem. One of the biggest physical traits Jamie Fraser is known for would be his red locks. Numerous traits make him stand out from the crowd, and his hair is on the list. However, what did it take to make the transformation happen? When Sam Hewen signed on to play the notorious Scott, he knew he'd have to dye his hair traditionally dirty blonde to complete the look of Jamie Fraser. Credit goes to the hair department. They did a great job and used a few different shades of red hair dye to get the look just right. But sadly for Hewen, he had to dye his hair every three weeks just to maintain it. The magic didn't end there, though. The same thing happened to Claire, as her massive jet black curls aren't real. Katrina Belf's natural hair is perfectly straight, so it has to be curled for the purpose of the show. Who knew, right? Sophie Skelton, who plays Brianna Fraser in the series, captured this image from the hair and makeup trailer, jokingly captioning it, the one where Roger and Brianna go to Russia. Is anyone's hair natural in this show? Well, according to makeup and hair designer extraordinaire of Outlander, Annie McEwan, they have over 300 wigs and counting, all of which are very expensive. She apparently has never had that many wigs on one show before, but it makes sense that Outlander would need so many given how much history is involved. And history includes lots of interesting hair pieces. Jamie's Scarred Back Makeup and prosthetics play a huge role in period dramas such as Outlander, and especially when there's a character like Jamie Fraser who's been through a lot of courageous sacrifices. Sam Hewen's makeup artist on Outlander, Wendy Kemp Forbes, is blessed with doing the entirety of his hair, makeup, and yes, back scars for every episode. Guess how much time it takes? What may seem like a lovely privilege is actually a really time-consuming and extensive job. To create the look of Jamie's back scars from the whipping he received from Black Jack Randall way back in season one, Hewen has to be in the makeup chair for nearly three hours. This is why he tends to nap during the process to catch up on his sleep. With all those night shootings, we totally understand. What a morning routine. Interestingly enough, Sam still sticks to it. The scars on Hewen's back are created with two pieces of silicon. The color on the molds is made lighter every season, indicating that they have faded as Jamie has aged. Who knows, maybe we'll get to the point where I've got a big white beard. After all, it's a story of time jumps. A bad thing for a good reason. We love Outlander for how seriously sexy it is. During an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Katrina Bell revealed, What I think we do really beautifully is show a couple balanced and equally appreciating and enjoying each other. That's so true. The series' creators have always been very careful about how the intimate scenes are shot, as they want to eliminate objectification in any form. I mean, they're very cathartic, those scenes, sometimes. Any Outlander fan knows that the sexual moments between Jamie and Claire look very well balanced and don't neglect either female or male pleasure. However, what does it take to make those scenes happen? It's a real job and it can be exhausting. Sam Hewen confirmed to Mary Claire, There's always so many people watching and you have to do it over and over. Sure, we all like to get intimate, but not all day? It takes a lot of energy. Actors are not unflawed people. You have your own personal shame and vanity and all of those things, and you try to leave those at the door, but you also know that if you feel insecure, that's going to hamper your ability to lose yourself in a scene," said Katrina on an episode of Outcasts. Claire is often seen as a strong, matriarchal character, but she was deeply wounded in the season 5 finale, so the upcoming season is going to be all about her healing. I think what's going on in the world at the time, 1775, is really similar to what's going on with Jamie and Claire. There's going to be a revolution with them as well," the showrunner Matthew B. Roberts told Elle. And as we know, a revolution in Outlander includes a good amount of racy storylines. The Secret of the Kilt He's my husband. Stop trying to see up his kilt, or I'll come after you. Yeah, watch it, she will. <laughs> OK, we solemnly swear we're up to nothing like that. Either way, rumor has it that the actors portraying the hot-blooded Highland warriors do it the most authentic way possible. In other words, they may not be bothered to wear underwear underneath their kilts. Very liberating and comfortable, as Sam says. Jamie's kilt is Fraser Tartan, a pattern that's been popular with fans and fashioned into everything from scarves to masks. Anyway, we know you're desperately searching for something to quench your droughtlander thirst, and Sam just released something that will bring you back to life. It's kind of an extreme sport, wearing a kilt, says Hewan on his new show about Scotland with a surprising title, Men in Kilts, where he drives around Scotland with Graham McTavish, his Outlander co-star and fellow native Scot. Sam has always been proud of his motherland. He even managed to write a book with McTavish based on their road trip called Clanlands, whiskey, warfare, and a Scottish adventure like no other, which reached the top of the New York Times bestseller list. Well done, lad! The cast adores the animals. 
Outlander rings with authenticity. Everything feels so real, including the animals. So are Sam and Katrina really riding their horses? Aye. Both lied in the hiring process by claiming they already knew how to horseback ride and both had to actually learn how to do it. When the actors were cast in their roles, they had two weeks of boot camp in order to teach them how to fight, speak Gaelic, handle weapons, and ride horses. Apart from magnificent horses, the show also has lovely dogs and cats. The whole cast adores working with animals. Hewan confessed they're really lucky to be in a show that has that quality of disruption, energy, and fun. I actually am thinking about getting my own cat because I've, I've kind of fallen in love with him. That's what we call a vibrant work environment. All in all, the biggest animal lover on set is Katrina Belf. Posting to Instagram, the actress posed with a horse named Travis as she gave fans a glimpse into the filming of the highly anticipated season six. My first love, Travis, my season one dream boat is back on set. The horse I properly learned to ride on, be still my heart. Katrina wrote alongside a selfie with the horse. The Droughtlander continues for a wee bit longer, but one thing we know for sure about season six is... It's gonna be worth it. Guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please check out our exciting Outlander secret revealing stories. And don't forget to stay awesome.